Greetings everyone, I'm Hernan Vitemolar and I work as a software QA analyst at Mulesoft. I'll be displaying how to meet the configuration requirements for using Mulesoft Twitter connector in a Mule project and how to use the most common operations. Also, from time to time, we'll be checking how changes are being reflected on our Twitter account. In order to build and run this project, you will need a Twitter account and some basic data setup, like a retweet from a user you're following and a tweet with a mention. An app on Twitter developer site has to be created also in order to generate the necessary security tokens to authenticate the connector. You will need to download and install Mule Studio Community and we'll be using HTTP inbound endpoints, so a browser will be required to make the request and view the operations payloads. We're going to start building our first example. For that, we first need to create an application in the Twitter developer side. For that, you go to the My Applications option. And after creating an application, you will be provided the credentials that are required to authenticate the connector. After that, you go to Mil Studio. Uh, I, I've already created the project, for that you go to new new project and as you can see under the app folder there is a new app properties file that should be populated in this way with uh, as key value pairs with the credentials that you were given. Afterwards you go to the global elements tab and you create a Twitter global element. I already created mine and the fields on this global element should be populated using placeholders like this and they will be picking the values from the property files. Let's continue building our first example. For that we're going to be using HTTP inbound endpoints. I'm going to drop it in the canvas. Now I'm going to select a Twitter cloud connector and then a JSON transformer, because we're going to be looking at the responses on the browser. Let's name the flow the same as the operation, show user. Show user. user. Let's put a path value so we can identify the endpoint. Let's put show user as display name on the connector. Let's select the Twitter global element and then the show user operation. Let's save and run the application. The application is up and now we're going to hit that endpoint in our browser. As you can see in the response there is information related to the user that has authenticated the connector. Um, for now we're going to be needing, needing the ID value of the user and also its screen name for later requests. I'll be displaying the usage of the update status and send direct message operations now. As you can see, I have arranged the flows in the same way as in our first example. There is an HTTP inbound endpoint, a Twitter component, and then a transformer to JSON. Each of the HTTP inbound endpoints has uh, the operation name set as path value. Um, okay, let's start with the update status operation. This operation will be tweeting this is a Twitter status as text to our timeline. Next, there are the sender messi direct message operations. Uh, one of, of them is by screen name and the other by user ID. Both of these values were retrieved on our previous show user response. And as you can see, I've been, I'm going to use this mule expression to retrieve the operation attributes from the URL parameters. Let's run the application. Now let's, let's hit the update status endpoint. Uh, a tweet has been made and this is its ID and this is the text it contained and if we refresh our home you will be seeing it appear. 
Next, I'm going to use the send direct message by screen name operation. A direct message was sent to this user. And if you go to your Twitter account, you can see in the direct messages that a direct message by screen name has recently been made. At last, there is the user ID, direct message operation. That does the same as the pre previous one, but uh, uses a different value to identify the user. The next set of operations relates to timelines and mentions. As you can see, the flows are arranged the same way as before. The, starting with the get home timeline, this operation will retrieve everything that's on the authenticated user timeline, uh, including retweets, uh, tweets made by other users, and so on. Then the get user timeline will retrieve only messages that were posted by this user. And you can also get a user timeline by screen name or get a user timeline by user ID, as you can see in these two operations. And at last, there is a get mentions operation that will be retrieving um, statuses containing at username in them. So let's run the application. Let's go to the browser and hit the get home timeline. As you can see, our last tweet is in it. And there are also a bunch of records retrieved. Next, the get user timeline. That is going to retrieve also the tweet we made but a few less than the previous response. Now I'm going to request this user's timeline. And once again, the, the tweet we made is in it. This is the same operation, but uh, passing a user ID. So we're retrieving also, this is a Twitter status. And at last, we are going to get the mentions. And as you can see, this is a status containing a mention. For detailed information on the Twitter connector operations, check the API docs available in the GitHub repository. There are also Mule School entries on the Mule of blog that are helpful for understanding Mule expressions or when integrating with other services. Uh, now related to Mule ESP, you can visit Mules of website where webinars and other documentation is available under the resources option. Thank you for watching.